Welcome to this segment of my educational series on prosthetics, orthotics, and amputee rehabilitation. My name is Dr. Heike Ustall. I'm a specialist in rehabilitation medicine, and I hope this is an educational and enjoyable video. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. It's Dr. Ustall. This segment today, we're going to talk a little bit about prosthetic knees. So if you have an amputation above the knee, one of the parts, one of the components that we will be ordering for you will be a mechanical type of knee. Now there are many different categories and there are many different designs, but we'll go through some of the basic categories and explain a little bit about what they're useful for. Just like we talked about with prosthetic feet in some of our other segments, there are basically four categories that Medicare has established. So we'll use that as a guideline. If you are a category one or level one APT, meaning you're walking mostly indoors on level surface, then realistically your demands for the knee are going to be relatively low. You're going to walk at a slower speed and maybe pretty much at the same speed all the time. We call that cadence, fixed cadence, meaning the leg swings and moves kind of at one set speed for you, usually slower. And relatively speaking, for people that are a little bit older, a little more disabled, they want something that's much lighter. So fortunately, the category one knees are typically very light, very simple to use. They are low performance, but they are very safe and very stable. The simplest category we have to look at first here is what's called a manual lock knee. The knee joint is here. You see there's a cable comes up to here. And this is basically a lock mechanism for the knee itself. Right now the knee is locked. It doesn't move at all. So that the entire time that you walk, when your foot hits the ground, it's locked. When you come to here, it's locked. When you want to swing it ahead, it remains locked. The only time you would unlock this knee is when you want to sit down, you pull the trigger, and the knee bends. The trigger is a very simple mechanism. A patient can reach with one or two fingers. The beauty of this is that when you go from sitting to standing, it's spring-loaded, so it locks automatically. You don't have to touch it. Now it remains locked all the time. So heel hits the ground, rolls forward, always stays locked. The second prosthetic knee that is available for someone that's in a category one or a category two that may be indoors and a little bit outdoors, but again, primarily level surface, is what we call a stance control. A stance control is a weight activated locking mechanism. So when there's no pressure on it, it bends very easily. It kind of swings freely. But as soon as you hit the ground and put some weight onto it, the knee locks. It won't bend now. As long as you put roughly 20% or more pressure on there, it stays locked as long as you stay on top of it. Once you get here to the toe and start lifting your weight off of it, you catch the toe on the floor for just a second, that starts the bending process, and then it swings. It's kind of spring-loaded, so you don't even have to kick it out yourself. It kicks all by itself to get out there. As long as the knee goes fairly straight, and you put the weight onto it, it locks. So it's a weight-activated lock mechanism also known as a stance control, typically for indoor or limited outdoor ambulators, category one or category two. Now here's a special type of knee that was designed for people that have longer amputation limbs or people that need a little bit more stability without the lock mechanism. It is now a bigger, bulkier, and heavier type of knee. It is called a four bar polycentric. See how there's multiple connectors here? That's why it's called a four bar polycentric. It pivots not just in one location like the other ones did, but it has a moving or migrating pivot point. Now, one of the big advantages here is that much of this hardware swings down back here. So if you have a longer amputation limb, this stuff doesn't stick out when you're, when you're sitting down, it swings out of the way. This one also unlocks when you put pressure on the toe and swings freely, but when it gets to this position, you put pressure onto it, it bends only a little bit. You see that five or 10 degrees of bending that occurs there? There's a little shock absorber or bumper in there that allows this little bit of shock absorption or cushion when you hit the ground, but then you can't bend any more than that. It stays locked until you come forward onto the toe and then magically it releases. So it will swing freely when the leg is in the air, but when you put weight onto it, it locks but allows this little bit of motion we call that stance flexion, which is what we normally would do with our own leg anyway. The next higher level of category is a hydraulic knee. 
Now for patients that are in category three, meaning they're walking outdoors, longer distance, basically more normal activities, uneven surfaces like grass, up and down hills, most of those patients, number one, will tolerate a bigger and heavier knee, but also need the safety of walking on uneven surfaces, walking up a hill, down a hill. So this is a full-size hydraulic piston, and this gives you resistance both when it's swinging and when you're in stance. So when you go, when this foot hits the ground, this knee bends a little bit slowly in a controlled way because of the resistance of the hydraulic, and then it straightens out, and once you go to here, the knee bends, but then also swings. This has what they call variable cadence, meaning it will swing faster if you push it faster. It'll swing slower if you push it slower. So it will walk fast and slow and keep up with you. Unlike the other ones we saw, which are fixed cadence, where they walk at one speed, this will walk at pretty much any speed that you want to walk at. This particular one has a straight cylinder type of piston. This is also a hydraulic knee. This one actually has a rotary piston. So it's more of a hydraulic piston that's in a coiled fashion. It gives you the same type of resistance, both when you're in stance, meaning leg is on the ground, and when it goes to swing. So it will swing fast and slow, depending on how fast you want to walk. These are definitely heavier. This will add a pound and a half of weight to the entire prosthesis, which for some people is extraordinary and may be well too much. Now there is a final category called the microprocessor control knees. So I don't have one here right now, but imagine this whole piston here plus electronics and sensors that now control exactly how that piston works. There's an electronic sensor in the pylon or down here in this tube, and there's an electronic sensor around the knee that detects how much body weight is going into the prosthesis and how quickly the knee is bending. And between those two sensors, it actually changes the resistance of the hydraulic piston 60 times per second, meaning every step you take, it has readjusted the hydraulic piston, the resistance, 60 times. You don't really even have to think about it. If suddenly your toe catches and your knee starts bending very quickly, it senses that quick movement of the knee and stiffens it up. It gives you a moment to catch yourself. That's called stumble recovery. Now, these hydraulic knees and the microprocessor, computer-controlled hydraulic knees, clearly are heavier, they're much more expensive. It actually costs about $18,000 to put a computer-controlled hydraulic knee onto the prosthesis. And that drives up the cost and the weight of the entire prosthesis to $30,000 to $50,000. Now, we know insurance pays for some of this, but not necessarily all of it, but it's a serious consideration when we prescribe these devices for our patients. So you need to recognize that not every knee is perfect for every patient. There are reasons why some are heavier and some are lighter. There are reasons why some are simpler and easier to use and others are a bit more complicated. And realistically, this is a serious discussion you need to have with your doctor and your prosthetist about which design or which knee joint is going to work best for you. Because the perfect choice for you will not necessarily be the perfect choice for someone else. That may be you saw on TV or so on some kind of a commercial somewhere. Or your friend's friend has a special knee that they love and they're fantastic with it. But the knee that's right for you is the one that performs the way you want it to. So talk to your prosthetist, ask questions, look on the internet. But remember, don't believe everything you see on the internet. Talk to your prosthetist, the person that's actually going to design it and make it for you. And if you need to talk to a doctor, give me a call. I'm the doctor you want to know.